Hey guys, I am just setting up everything, so give me a minute. There we go. Why am I always okay in the view screen on my phone? And oops. And sideways on the iPad. See, and I'm hearing myself. Good morning. How is everybody today? So we're going to um, work on some more little mini canvases. Yeah, I don't understand that. It's The view on the phone is fine. It's just sideways on the iPad. It's got to be something with the app. I don't know. They can't keep up with the iOS updates, I think. <laughs> Good afternoon. Hey, Brandy. Yeah, I, I try that. It doesn't work. Let's see. No, it flips right back. <laughs> I don't know. So, but I can see your comments on the iPad. I know you guys can't see it, but I always have the i. I get asked this a lot. How do I see the comments? So, because my phone is up there broadcasting. And I have myself on the iPad off to the side so I can see your comments. Because I can't paint and stand on the stool and look at my phone all at the same time. I'm not that talented. <laughs> so before we got started making any new paintings, I wanted to talk to you guys about... Yeah, see, a lot of people do. Um, so all of these little canvases still need to be sealed. I haven't done that yet, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this. Yeah, these are the ones that I've been doing. And I may give some of them as gifts. I may sell them in my Etsy shop. I haven't decided yet. This top one, I can tell you for sure, is staying here with me. I am just in love with her, as all are all of you. Hey, and I do not have the heart to get rid of her. I will be making a proper high-res scan of her, though, and offering her for sale in my Etsy shop. She is my favorite image I've done in a while on a canvas. Um, just the way the collage came out and the colors and everything she's so cute yeah I agree um, so but what she needs to have done I need to scan her first so when you create any of your paintings whether it's watercolor or acrylic you should seal it to protect the artwork um, if you're if you think it's something you want to scan to either put up for sale or to use um, and reproduce to reprint and use in other artworks then you probably want to scan it before you put any finish coating on it, any sealer. The sealers, even the matte sealer, are still a little bit glossy, and they're just enough to screw up the scan and make it difficult to scan. It's not impossible, but it's hard. Um, so I'll be scanning her first before I do anything. Now, when I do seal her and protect her, because she's got some Stabilo pencil on here, I will be spraying her first with a fixative spray like Krylon's Matte Finish Spray or Spectrafix so that that pencil doesn't run or move anywhere. And then I'll let that dry completely and probably do it a, co a couple coats. Then I will be taking something like, and this is Monday with DecoArts, so we'll begin talking about DecoArt projects products. There's other things out there you could use, but I do like DecoPage, uh, Americana DecoPage. This is the antique, which has a little bit of a color to it. So it's just slightly off white. It's this like ambery color. It does dry clear. It doesn't, of course, doesn't stay milky, but it, stay, it has this slightly off ambery color to it that gives your painting um, a little bit of an old worn look, which I really like. I'll let this dry completely. And then anybody who's used decoupage glue in your journals before knows that if you don't put wax on top of this, something like this, then it's going to stick to itself or stick to the acrylic paint on the other page, right? So the way to solve that is wax. Now in your art journals, you could use um, Daddy Van's beeswax. I use that a lot. Um, you could use Dorland's, which is an art wax. Let's see. I've got to move my water. Hang on. So this is Daddy Vans. Um, and then I'll answer that question in just a minute. 
Um, and this is Dorland's, which is more of an art wax. Now, Daddy Vans is all natural beeswax. You can put it on with your bare hands. It's not going to hurt anything, but it's beeswax. So if your um, piece ever gets warm, it's going to reactivate the beeswax and it's going to remelt. Yeah. In your journals, that's probably fine. It probably doesn't matter. On a canvas that you might be sticking in the mail, that might matter. So you want to use a wax that's going to, when it's dry, it's going to dry and stay hard and not reactivate with the heat. Dorland's doesn't reactivate when it's dry, uh, but it's a chemical. Um, so use gloves. Brandy, use gloves. <laughs> um, and cream, the cream wax by DecoArt is also not a natural product. So when it dries, it stays hard. So you want to use something more like these over your sealer. Now you can of course use varnish. Um, I love Liquitex gloss medium and varnish, but you still want to put a little bit of wax on them because they can still get a little sticky if they're up against say another painting um, or something with acrylic paint on it, they can get stuck together. So it's probably a good practice that after your varnish or deco page, whatever you've used to seal your canvas dries, put some wax on it. So I wanted to make sure we talked about that a little bit while everybody was joining us this morning. Um, I use water-based varnish sometimes from the hardware store for my paintings. I also use uh, Liquitex gloss medium and varnish. Um, all of those are perfectly acceptable. You're welcome. So now we're going to do some more little paintings and I have this one I found when I was going cleaning some stuff this weekend. I forgot I had this little painting. And I, yeah, I have the Liquitex. I like the Liquitex one. Um, I found this little canvas. I think I got it in a pocket letter. Um, it might have been Happy Mail, but I think it was in a pocket letter. It is like one and seven eighths inch square. <laughs> it's so little. We're actually going to try painting on this this morning. It's so small. Um, I thought that might be an interesting challenge. And then, of course, I have some more of these four inch by four inch square um, little mini stretch canvases. You can find these at most of your arts and crafts stores in the fine art department. Um, they all seem to be about the same price everywhere, whether it's Hobby Lobby or Michael's um, or wherever. They're about five dollars for two. And of course, you could use a coupon. They're great little um, gifts and they're good little practice. Um, and as we've discussed before, um, you know, as I started painting these, it started dawning on me that, you know, if you group them together, <laughs> a bunch of, you know, random, you know, images, they're not even like images that associate with each other at all. They make an interesting composition. Can't you see like a wall just covered in these? We've discussed this, I think, every time we've broadcast. Um... I can totally see a wall covered in these and like little canvases from different artist friends of mine. I think that would be fun here in the studio. So yeah, the two by twos are little. I haven't done one this little in, in quite a while. So we're going to try that this morning. We're going to, I've got a bunch of small brushes out here because, you know, we are working on little canvases. So, and I need my palette plate which is around somewhere. Been doing lots of collage work in case you guys haven't noticed on social media. I'm trying to get my collage journal done. Yeah, right? See, I think it would be a lot of fun. So we've got some DecoArt Artist Traditions paints. Um, they're really nice quality affordable paints. Um, they have this sample set of 12 um, bottles that come with... Um, what 10 colors and two mediums glazing medium and extender and blending medium um, so this is a good um, a good little sample pack I have some extra colors off to the side because you know y'all know I love my neons so of course I've got the Americana neons which is also by DecoArt and I've got some extra colors that don't come in the sample pack um, but I have them in the larger bottles this is the aquamarine I mean you know it's aquamarine, people. <laughs> so I had to pull that out. And I've got some more white and stuff like that because I wasn't sure. So on this little teeny tiny one, I thought we would try actually some kind of a um, winter scene. I thought that would be fun. 
So I'm going to take my plate here and I'm going to um, put some white, take the dried paint booger off. Let's see, two seconds into it, I've already got paint on my hands. <laughs> I went to walk up to my husband with painty hands and go, ooh, hug me. And he goes, ew. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take some white. And then I'm going to just make it slightly off white. I want to make it like a blue. I'm going to use a little bit of Prussian blue. I know, right? Some of the fun things we do to tease our husbands, our partners. Or partner. All right, so I'm going to use some Prussian blue and a flat brush. And I'm just going to mix this with, I just want something that's kind of off-white. Um, that's actually too dark. So we're going to lighten it up with some more white. Whether you're working with acrylics, I know, paint, right? Whether you're working with acrylics or watercolor, the most important thing to remember, just have fun. Don't let it stress you out. Okay, that's a pretty good color. That's still a little dark, but I'm going to go with that, and I'm going to use some white, white. And then we're going to grab a little bit of neon pink, because, you know, I just can't help myself. Okay, so those are our three colors we're going to use to start. So here's our little canvas, and we're going to take, and I'm going to basically just do the background, and we're going to lay on some of this blue color that we made. Don't forget to paint your edges. I'm going to just wipe my brush off. This is um, canvas drop cloth, so I'm going to wipe my brush off here. I'm going to grab some white. I'm going to put that on, and I'm going to leave it. See how it's streaky right there? I want to leave it like that. I don't want to. I don't want it to be too blended. I want to let the paint marks and streaks help me suggest something interesting in my background. Now down here at the bottom, I want to put just a little bit of pink. So I'm going to take a little bit of my neon pink and some white. And I'm going to just lighten it up a bit. Welcome everybody. We don't have to worry too much about making mud because we've got pink and blue, which together make purple. This is just a background. I'm gonna have a hard time not sticking my fingers in something. This canvas is really little. It's a challenge though. Okay, so now I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm gonna just use the damp brush while the paint is still wet to blend the blue into the pink and the pink into the blue just a bit. That's good. So we're going to let that one dry. I'm going to push it up here and let it dry. I'm going to take a bigger one. And this time we're going to make a dark blue, blue, black color. So let's take some um, ultramarine blue. And let's put a little bit of, let's put a little bit of black in it. You don't have to get too complicated. And what kind of brushes do I have? We're going to use a little bit bigger brush. This is a, called a sword. It's like an angled flat brush. So we're going to mix these together. 
I just want to darken the blue and get something that's more of a Payne's Gray. I don't have that in the Traditions paint, but you definitely could mix something similar by mixing ultramarine and a little bit of black. And we get something that's a nice dark blue. So on this one, we just want to cover the whole thing with this dark blue paint that we created. Don't be afraid to, you know, get your fingers in there. And don't forget about the edges. All right. These little canvases make great gifts if you're giving gifts for the holidays, whatever holiday that you celebrate. And think about, you know, taking your acrylic paints and painting on other unusual surfaces like, you know, you could get some of those ceramic ornaments at the uh, craft store and paint a little, little landscape on the round surface. Wouldn't that be a challenge? But that would be a fun challenge. Now this is how I normally paint when you guys aren't around. I generally do not do one painting at a time. I usually am always working on multiple projects at the same time. It's a question I got re asked recently. Now I'm putting I'm I'm putting some more paint on there, but I'm also kind of leaving it. You see that it's kind of streaky. I want to leave those streaks because it's going to aid us in the picture we're going to create later. More paint on my hands, see? So now we're going to push, grab the little one that we did first, and we're going to push this one to the side. Now, now I don't have thick coats of paint on here, so it should get dry enough fairly quickly. Okay, so now we're back to this little teeny guy. Um, one color we're going to need to add onto our palette for this one is... I think I might want to put some brown, so I'm going to use raw umber. And I think I want some green. So we have phthalo green blue. I think that'll work. All right, let's go with a small brush. Let's see. Okay, so this is a, a small filbert brush, and it is a number four filbert comb by Sim Simply Simmons. Uh, filbert brush is just a flat brush, but the bristles, instead of straight across, are rounded at the end. Um, and it's one of my favorite brushes to do landscapes with, so we're going to use that. Now in watercolor, remember it's all of, I mean in watercolor, holy cow, I'm thinking about watercolor Wednesday. In acrylic paint, it's all about layers of mark making and you can start out with really dark colors like we have up here and then add your lighter colors on top of it. Um, so go ahead and do your background, whatever you want the sky to be and then work on the foreground and that's almost always how I work. Hey, how are you? <clears throat> so we are going to start with white. Oops. And I'm going to just put in some like snowy foreground. First with white. Then I'm going to take some of my same blue I used for the sky. And I'm going to use it for my sh my color in the snow for the shadows. and to help me define some of my shapes. Remember, if you're gonna do like mountainy shapes that, you know, they're not generally straight. They're, you know, 
bumpy and uneven and that's okay. Now I'm gonna, I wanna put a tree. So I'm going to take some of my raw umber on the end of my filbert brush. I'm gonna turn my canvas, I think it'll be a little easier for me. And I'm going to just barely touch it to the canvas and I'm gonna run it straight up here. It's gonna mix a little bit with the white paint and give me a tree trunk that is, looks like it has snow on it and that's okay because that's kind of what we want. Let me do it again. And then I'm gonna do one more. All right, then I'm going to take um, a little bit of the brown. And I'm gonna dip part of my brush in some of the white. So they're both kind of on the color, on the brush at the same time and they're not blended. I'm gonna take the tip of my filbert brush here and I'm gonna Just tap it into the canvas. <laughs> Try not to move things around too much. It is a little canvas. Holy cow. Hold on, I need my reading glasses. Because it's really tiny. Oh, that's better. So I'm just letting the colors mix on the canvas. And I'm just tapping the round edge of the bristles of the filbert brush across and doing a zigzag across that sta straight line I made and letting it suggest pine tree branches. Yeah, like that. Now you could take a little bit of just the brown, no white. But you don't need a lot, so go easy. Hey! And we're going to tap a little bit of this darker brown color in. And you can always go back and add more, so, um, or you can go back and lighten it. So don't worry, you know, too much about getting the wrong color in the wrong place. Just keep working your layers until you get something that you like that you're happy with. And you notice I thought I was going to need green. I have not added any green yet. We'll see. Pine trees are generally kind of green in the winter too, so we might add tap in a little bit of that. Okay, now let's grab a little bit of that green we were talking about. And I'm gonna brown it up just a little bit with a little bit of the raw umber, because it's really bright green. And I think it's too bright for a winter scene. All right, let's put a little bit of this in here. I think it'll make it pop. Some more. It's not enough. So, have you all started going to your holiday parties yet with your families and friends? That's better. Just that little bit of green. There's not a lot of green on there, just a little bit.
that is cute. Oh, I started going to holiday parties this weekend with my daughter's boyfriend's parents who are from Lithuania. And that was a lot of fun. I'm going to take a little bit of that dark blue we made for the other canvas and I'm going to mix it with a little bit of white. And we're going to give our trees some shadow. Now we have this pink here in the background and we're going to pretend that that's the like setting sun. So that means the light's coming from this way. So the shadows would be falling that way. Okay, just a little bit, a little touch. I'm gonna put a little bit of white, the white down here. So I'm gonna cover up some of this pink. There we go. I'm going to go back in now that that's all done and I'm going to put in a little bit of just the white. How cute is that? And of course you can just keep adding layers until you get, you know, the look that you want for your little mini canvas. This one is really, really teeny. <laughs> Holy cow! So anyway, yeah, we were over at their house this weekend, had some really great food and a really nice visit. There we go. So how cute is that? I would probably stop there. I am going to stop there. So how cute is that for a little present? Yeah, okay, so we're gonna let set that one aside to dry. We're gonna work on this one. So we're gonna do something a little different and we're gonna need some more bright colors. I'm gonna grab the neon yellow and I'm gonna grab some aquamarine and we're gonna need some black. I know, snow scenes are fun. Okay, so we're going to do a little bit of a different one. And I think I need a bigger filbert brush. Let's see. That one's too big. We'll use this one. This is the same brand, Simply Simmons. This is the number eight. All righty. So, of course, first we're going to finish with our background. So this one's going to be more of a night sky. So let's start with um, some of the neon pink. And I've got to decide. Let's see, we're going to just tap it on here. I'm going to move it around with my fingers, which are a little dirty, to be honest, but that's all right. Add some of the yellow. I'm not cleaning my brush. Again, I'm not cleaning my brush. Think galaxy or nebula or what do they call it in the northern hemisphere? Aurora Borealis. Northern lights, right? I don't know what they look like in real life because I've never seen them, but um, I only know what pictures look like. This is the aquamarine. I'm 
we still have some of our dark color here so you know if you need to work some of this in if you get colors in the wrong place you don't like the edges they're not blending enough for you you know remember that acrylic paint is all about layers of mark making and the more layers you put on there the more interesting it's going to be And the more marks and my favorite painting tools are not the brushes they're my fingers so any of you that have seen me paint know that already if you've seen me in journaling crazy island style or on youtube or over on udemy i, I almost always get my fingers involved <laughs> i can't help myself Another great painting tool is baby wipes. So you can get in here with the baby wipe and you can move your paint around or you can take it off. Oh, sorry, Brandy. Yeah, you know, I had problems with my printer not long ago and um, my husband and I just decided that we were gonna go ahead and buy a new one because it just was not worth the headache to fix it, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> it was just a pain in the neck. Oh yeah, see? Worst case scenario, go to your local office supply store and have them scan it and save it to a flash drive for you. Um, I'm real near a Staples, so I can always go there and have them do it. Now I'm going to take, where is it? Oh, here. This is just a little cup. Any little cup will do. This is happens to be one from some gelato that I got when I was in Las Vegas last last. My family cracks up because I always they give it in these plastic cups and of course I take the cup back to the hotel room wash it out and bring it back to California with me because you know that's what we do right we're mixed media artists I'm gonna take one of my round brushes I have here and some white paint and then I'm gonna um, put some water in it Water it down a bit. I need a little more white paint. Yeah, I also save the cups from the single serving um, yogurts because I like to eat yogurt. That works too. So now I'm going to just. Now, if your splatters come out too big, don't worry about it. So you can always get in there with the rag. I know I'm always getting laughed at or, you know, my family, when we leave a restaurant, my family just keeps walking because they know I'm going to stop and ask somebody for a business card or, you know, deli paper or they're kind of getting used to it a little bit. Yeah, see, and then just add some white splatters for um, stars. You can blend some of them into the background if you've gotten too many or, you know, you want to alter the shape of them a bit. Um, don't just leave them feel like you have to just splatter and just leave it that way. Play and have fun. Okay, I'm going to take some of my white paint undiluted. And I'm going to just, I'm barely, barely, barely touching it to the canvas. And of course, do this if Yay! Do this if, you know, those of you out there who are like, okay, I cannot just splatter on there and just be okay with where they go. I feel ya. <laughs> so then sit here with the brush and paint your splatters on, you know, just paint them stars on instead of splattering anywhere.
this is the same kind of similar way you would do kind of a galaxy painting in acrylic paint. And you could totally turn this into a galaxy painting because you could just not do anything else to it except this kind of thing and it would be fun. Especially right now if you have like maybe a Star Wars fan on your Christmas list, you could do this and maybe you could decoupage a picture of, what is that big round, is it the Death Star <laughs> in the corner? I don't know tons about um, Star Wars. All right, so now I'm going to actually do something I don't normally do, and I'm going to bust out my um, heat tool. I don't usually use this with acrylic paint, but we need to dry these splatters before we can do anything else. I remember seeing the first uh, Star Wars when it was brand new. And I've seen all I've seen all of the old ones, but I haven't seen any of the newer ones. But I love science fiction, so we're gonna have to correct that. So you just want to kind of take the shine off, especially if you really love where your stars are because you don't want to move them around. Now that by itself is an interesting painting without doing anything else to it. But we're not gonna leave it at that. Because you know, why would we do that? What did I do with that bigger filbert brush I just had? Is that it? <laughs> I just I put it away, there it is. Okay, so we're gonna take that filbert brush and now we're gonna make this look like something like it's a night landscape. So I'm going to use black. Which is why we wanted the sky to be a dark blue instead of black because now the black is going to really show up. You could use a black that has a little bit of um, iridescent medium in it. And I'm really liking that idea so hang on. This is, I know this is Monday with DecoArt, but they don't make this <laughs> that I'm aware of. This is by Liquitex, it's iridescent medium. It's already pearlized and you can mix it with any acrylic paint. And here's a iridescent blob. So it looks like that. So fun stuff to have around in your studio. I'm gonna mix a little bit of it with the black. And it's going to make it a little bit pearlized without changing the color of the black. So that when it dries, it'll have a little bit of a um, pearly finish. All right. So now we're going to do some more trees. So I'm going to turn again, because I'm right-handed, I'm going to turn the canvas a bit. Yes, they do in the fine art department. If you only are going to buy one medium to experiment with, my favorite one on the planet is iridescent medium. FYI. You know, of all the like textury mediums or ones that alter the finish, you know, you have your gel mediums and they're great glues. I never use them for anything but glue, but your other fun mediums to add to paint, iridescent medium is my favorite. All right, so I'm going to take my filbert brush and again, I'm going to draw a straight line up for my tree trunk. You always do things in groups of three is more interesting than one or four. And you don't want to really stop them in the smack in the center of the canvas because that's not, um, that's kind of boring. It's not interesting. But try to remember your rules of three. So you want your focal points to be in the horizontal or vertical thirds of the canvas. To be interesting. So we've got three here, a big one and then two smaller ones. Now we're going to take our filbert brush and we're going to do just like we did before. I'm sticky, I just have black and I'm going to tap the end of the brush and I'm going to go back and forth and I'm not going to be even about it. So my 
my strokes are gonna, some are gonna be short, some are gonna be longer, and that gives it a more natural look. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing to the other two trees. My favorite brush for doing trees is the Filbert brush. We lost some viewers. Thank you for the hearts, I appreciate all the hearts. Okay, I like that. So now if this was really a winter scene, there'd be some snow on the branches. Because it's a night winter scene, I don't want the snow to be white, white. So I'm gonna take some of my white that's on my palette and mix it with the black that we have that's pearly and make a gray color. Something that's light, not too light. Just using up the extra colors that are on my palette. We're gonna now do the same thing. And it's gonna still be, have some pearly sheen to it because I mixed it with the black that had the iridescent medium in it. So now we're gonna tap. Okay, I'm gonna wipe my brush off. I'm gonna grab just some straight black. I'm gonna to try to make the right side of the tree a little darker than the left side. And that will give it the illusion of where the light is coming from that's hitting the tree. There you go. Now let's do the other ones. Now the trees that are farther away from the viewer shorter, smaller, they would be darker. So you want to, when you're done, have them be darker. And if you get too much paint on it, like I think I kind of did on that one, then I want to make sure I take black and I make it darker than I even I did on this one. I want a little bit of this gray showing, but I want it not as much as um, the other tree. And I do think I'm gonna put a little bit of white on here and really make it pop. I'm gonna take a really, I have a really small brush here. This is a liner brush, it's really teeny. That's kind of splayed a little bit, but it's okay. And I'm gonna take some of the white paint, maybe even the watered down white, because the watered down white's gonna dry a little bit translucent. And I'm gonna take just a little bit and I'm gonna just and I'm tapping, again, I'm tapping. I'm not drawing lines with the paintbrush, I'm tapping. And it's, because everything is wet, it's blending with what's already on here, which is okay. And when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you, you know, if you want your light source coming from the left, that you remember that. And if you're like me and you forget sometimes, oops, when you're painting, then um, it's not a bad idea to like put a post-it note on your easel or your table. I do do that. Oops, I go again with too much water. It's all right, I'm gonna just work with it. most important thing is to remember again just play and have fun because what's the worst thing that could happen you don't like your painting and you hate the way it turns out all right well use it as a layer of marks 
to continue on, or worst case scenario, put gesso over it. Just play. And I'm just tap again, I'm just tapping. I'm not drawing a line. I'm just tapping and using the marks that come up to help me give some shape to my tree. There we go. That is a cute tree. <laughs> All right, we need some more white though. These two trees need to be darker, so they don't. We don't want them so light. So we'll see what happens. And all this leftover paint that you have on your palette, if it's still wet when you're done, then um, use it to color uh, some new journal pages or something. That's way too much paint. Okay, we're gonna come in here with some black. Just painting night trees. So I either, if my background is dry, then I wipe it off with a baby wipe or a rag. If my background is wet, then I um, just add more darker paint over it. Like right there, I'll, I'll, I'll do it on purpose. So the question was, what do you do if you put too much paint? For those of you who didn't see. Or if you're watching this on YouTube, <laughs> you don't see the questions. So like this paint is wet, so I could damp it with a rag and I could work with it that way, or I could just go in here with some more paint and just add more layers and more marks to my tree until I get the look that I want. I want some white on there, but I don't want tons because this tree should be a bit darker. And I just keep working at adding marks and adding layers until I get the finished look that I want. And with these little canvases, sometimes you have to just not be too precious about the marks. And you have to just experiment and play and add, you know, more layers. It's more about adding more layers than it is about um, taking paint off and being perfect. So look, so that tree, I like the way that tree turned out. So let's do one more. This is our smallest and most far away tree, and I can tell you right now that's way too much paint. So let's get in here with the black. And when you put the darker color on here, of course, if you move it around a lot, it's going to blend with the light one. You're going to get a lot of blending, and maybe that's what you want. Maybe it's not what you want, but maybe it's a happy accident. Isn't it Bob Ross that used to talk about happy accidents all the time? And they're not a bad thing. So I'm just tapping away. I'm gonna go back with some black. You guys notice we didn't get any trolls today. Yay. So sometimes, you know, you add too much dark and then you add too much light and you just, but just keep going back and forth until you're real happy with the results. Keep a light touch on your paintbrush. 
Yeah, I have to go back and look. It's been a couple of days, and I try to remember to check every couple of days. So keep a light touch on your paintbrush. No digging any holes to China. <laughs> There you go. Isn't that cute? The water bottle. Oops. Um, I sell them, give them away. A nighttime snow scene. Yeah, see, I thought that would be fun. Um, I have an Etsy shop uh, that I sell things in. Um, I also give them away as Christmas gifts. They make great Christmas gifts. You can go to GinaBAarons.com. If you Google my name here on Periscope, you will find me all over the internet, including Etsy. And um, I have a website, GinaBAarons.com. And if you go there, there's links to all my social media and stores and all that stuff. But see, the problem is I paint these things and they're so cute and then I have problems giving them away. <laughs> or selling them. Ay, ay, ay. But I will, you know, scan them first. If you're, especially if you're gonna give them away, if it's something you really love, scan it first and that way you have a copy of it you can use in other artwork. Does anybody have any questions? So try the DecoArt uh, Traditions Acrylic Artist Paints. They are a really good quality, a good value. Oh, yay. Yeah, you know, you can take your artworks and reprint them. Um, you don't have to just reprint them onto paper. You can reprint them onto stickers. You can reprint them on any, you know, anything you can get to fit in your printer without damaging your printer. Uh, fabric, um, you know, canvas sheets. All, all kinds of stuff and you can have them reprinted on different things like cell phone cases mouse pads you know tote bags and stuff like that at Redbubble and um, Vistaprint and Shutterfly I haven't used it in a long time I do have a canvas pad that I use and that's a lot of fun but I haven't had the ad adhesive canvas in a long time but that would be a lot of fun to use. And I'm gonna spritz these while we're sitting here chatting. Sure, go for it. Takes a minute. There's a minute delay between wanting to ask a question and me seeing it on the screen. So this video will be on YouTube um, within a day or two, as soon as I can get it to talk nice to my computer and download it. They would make a really great, you could do, um, you know, one of these for each season. They make great gifts. Um, in the past, when I've done arts and craft shows, um, these little canvases sell really well. These are affordable art people can find a place for anywhere. Big canvases are harder to sell because everybody, you know, most people have no room on their walls. Um, but everybody has room for these little canvases. So this is a great, um, you know, arts art and craft show thing. So if you're going to be doing any shows, think about doing a few of these little canvases. And boy, this little teeny tiny one was a lot of fun. Uh, I got to say, the next time I'm at the store, don't be surprised if I'm telling you all that I got some more of these because that was a lot of fun. And it's only, like I said, it's like an inch and seven eighths square. It's just under two inches square. And this particular one on the back says Reeves Mini Canvas Countertop. This was gifted to me, I think, in a pocket letter. 
has this sticker on the back. So probably if you just go like to Amazon, Reeves Mini Canvas, I bet this comes up. This week on Wednesday with uh, Watercolor Wednesday, uh, we will be doing more um, Christmas themed paintings, gift themed paintings. I will be starting to work in my watercolor journal because although I'm not going to try to get it done for New Year's, I do want to get it done by the end of January. So um, we'll be doing some of our paintings in there. Um, and I will be uh, working on PDFs um, as I can. I didn't do one for last week's Faces class because uh, we already had a PDF document on Faces that covered pretty much everything that we covered already. Um, I may add to it the existing document and then I will email all of you who have bought that document a new copy. Um, but I may start doing the PDFs uh, from the Periscope video and um, so they won't be out before broadcast but they will be out when the video goes live to YouTube. That was that little piece of iridescent medium and I've been saving all my little paint boogers. I don't know what I'm going to do with them but these are just dried pieces of paint and I know some artists like Donna Downey take them and they put them on their art journal pages and I'm collecting quite a few colors here so I don't know. I don't know. So if you search for my name, same name here on Periscope, Gina B. Aarons. If you search for that on YouTube, if you put that in Google, <laughs> I have been on the internet for a long time, so my name will show up everywhere. Um, here, oops. Here you go. Oops. Hold on, hold on. There we go. So my name will show up a lot of places because I've been on the internet for so long. This is my website. And on the website is links, our links to, you go to contact us. And on the contact us page is not only my email address, but all my social media links, all of my shops. There is a um, shops page where you can see the best selling uh, current works. I have to update it, but and that has links, of course, to the shops. There's a class page with all the online classes free and paid for. Um, there's a blog page, which I try to update regularly. I have to do that also today. But you can find me here. And um, you can, you know, again, the YouTube link is on there, but you can also, hi, you can also just uh, put Gina B. Aarons in YouTube and I should come right up. And I do post these Periscope videos on YouTube. Uh, and I also am putting some of them over on Udemy, not the deco art ones, um, some of the watercolor ones. And they're in a class over there so that they can be downloaded so you have a copy for free without having to go to YouTube. Well, not for free. You have to pay for the class, but you get a copy of the. It just takes forever to download because these videos are like an hour long. But yeah, these are a lot of fun. Think about experimenting with these. And definitely like this one we did, this is already, these are already up on YouTube. These are some other ones that we've done. These are mixed media. So there's collage underneath here. You can see on this one, there's music notes in, in the background here by her neck. There's deco art collage papers on here. So you don't have to strictly do them with just painting. You can um, do them in mixed media fashion, but these little canvases, are a lot of fun. They make really great gifts. DecoArt has some really great products to do these with. So think about going to DecoArt.com and um, see, look, take a look around and see what they have. Um, these Traditions paints, like I said, are really great ones. Americana paints are too. When I first started getting back into painting, I used Americana paints. I still use them. I love the neons. And without being on the DecoArt uh, Helping Artist program, I already had the neons on my paint stash because they're my favorite. I wouldn't back I wouldn't uh, back a product if I didn't believe in it just so you guys know 
All right, I think that's it for today. We're right at about an hour. Um, try to have some fun with this. And if you have any questions or anything, go here, look for some of my links. I have a Facebook group. You can join the group and you can um, ask me questions in the group. I will answer them and um, have some fun. And remember the most important thing, which is to play. Just play and have fun. You're welcome. You guys have a great Monday too, and I will see you around the internet. Let me know if you have any questions or you get stuck on anything, and go out and do something nice for yourself today because you deserve it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I hope so, Brandy. You've got to let me know. I hope they come today. All right. Bye, guys.